you see the um, um, screen and making sure that there's no interruption. All right. Without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about seven steps to creating original content week after week, like a pro with <clears throat> content batching. So what I'm going to share with you here, this is exactly what I share with my client and exactly what I offer. Um, that's how we do it in my business. So that's exactly how we do it. And it works for us. Um, I'm going to share why and some step-by-step -step that you can absolutely use. And at the end, I'm going to give you um, 100 post ideas, a cheat sheet, which you can have a look. Okay, so in this session, we're going to go how the magical world of batching will eliminate content creation, stress, and overwhelm. This tend to be stress and content creation, stress, and overwhelm, of it. I wonder if they have it in their books when they're studying um, teaching psychology because it's such a stressful Thing. It, I know it is for me when I started. I'm a content creator, and if you are the same, you probably know. So, how many of you, um, when it comes to content, it becomes stress and overwhelming? But um, yes, you're good, or no, you're not good. I'm. I know I was stressed out. Yes, Julia, I'm exactly the same. But I was, but it's it's all getting it's all getting better. So it's just one of those things. But hopefully, after this session, you can see how. I do it and how much I love it and how we help our clients with the same steps. So I'm going to go ahead to find a project in your business that is with, um, perfect for fit for batching. It's not just to create content. You'd be surprised how much you can use this content batching. Next one, we're going to go through the seven steps to the content creation bliss, and then we're going to go through some Q&A. So a little bit about me. I built and sold my own business, um, two of my two business of my own i'm actually in a growing of the third one which is digital my uh, social media marketing agency which i specialize in helping service-based businesses so um i've got another passion which is i'm a digital solution advisor and business station i i am so excited about small business owners i've been there i've been to the trenches i know how hard it is started my business like in 2001 which no there was no social media there was yellow pages and uh, radios and you had money you could advertise if you did it it would have been hard i am a coffee lover some people might call it addict um coffee addict but i'm okay with it i'm happy with the eye twitches every now and then tin and soda is my favorite drink so. um and some people might go as far as saying i'm hilarious that was my mom and i think she can if she says i'm hilarious then i'm yeah, yeah, hilarious all right let's begin um get social with me on linkedin facebook wherever you are let's get social Okay, so first, before we do anything, I want to discuss if we were sharing, if you were sharing um, links from other posts, or if you're doing that, I want you to stop because it's very, very important. You can absolutely do it, but it's very important for us to create original content, which is our own content. And that is so, so important when it comes to building authority. So we're going to go through why creating original content is important. Number one, it builds your brand. And that it's so important. Number two, develop trust and deeper relationship. So people will see you and your business as a trusted advisor. You become, uh, there you go. You become a trusted go-to source for your niche, for who you actually serving. For me, service-based small businesses, and I've always, and I only do social media. We've got other services, but I want to serve these businesses to my clients and service-based businesses is to do with social media marketing, advertising, creating content, anything that it can assist them. Search engine optimization, this is so important. So when people search for something, if we are creating original content and people searching some phrases that that is in the original content that we created, even if your humble little post you do on your social, on your Facebook and Instagram, they still optimize for the search engine. Topic of interest and products and services. This assists you to see what products and services your customers want. Do they want the service that you provide? Do they want something else that you can absolutely provide to them? Um, connect with your audience at the earliest stages of Biogen. So if you are aware, when it comes to the marketing, we all go through the different stages before we make a purchase. To keep it simple, we have an interest stage. Something happened, grabs our inter interest. Are there engagements? Something happens that creates an engagement. 
in us. And then there is a next uh, period because we're interested. Now we start doing some research because we have to justify, do I want this or I don't want this? And then, then there is a buying, um, uh, buying, buying part. We don't just get up in the morning and say, mm, okay, I need to do this. I need to, I don't know organize this i need to organize i need to sell a house i need to buy a house i need to rent a house it doesn't happen it takes time unless you're evicted in the house so this then you wake up in the morning you have to find the house but this we don't just just wake up and say i want to do this now so you connect with your audiences in early stages because when you come to the end of the stage the cost of acquiring customer is more expensive. So lower lead costs. And that's proven we do in advertising. And that's, that has proven that every time we connect with the audience in the early stages of a buyer journey, you still advertise to people who might be ready right now. But you going for the low hanging fruit, the cost of advertising is very expensive. And by then, to be honest with you, they already decided who they want to go with. If they, this, you could be so lucky for them to go, oh, no, no, I'm going to go with Neda, for example. So when you connect with your audience at any stage, then your cost is lower and you can you can guide them through the journey, through your content to take when they're ready, they can buy from you. And obviously there's much more you can use that as original content. So before we do anything, we always, when it comes to creating content, anything, I love systems. Systems, processes, it's what I love. You must have a system and plan in order for us to do this, to create original content. With that, that it's always going to be you create content when you feel. Um, so when you have a system, when you have a plan, you're going to create content when you feel inspired or have time because you're allocating time to what you want to do. Um, you don't want to be doing, you don't want to do it when you're stressed out and have no idea uh, what to create. So the plan and system is important is because it gets rid of that stress and overwhelm. What happens is if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a system, is your content are inconsistent and very reactive. And I see that a lot with small businesses. Um, I see that a lot with small businesses, especially when it's um, depend on, we have some, one person attending. And make sure we got everybody. So the the reactive content actually doesn't work, especially if you're seasonal. If you know the certain season your sales are higher, when you have a plan, when you you create the content in advance, you guide people through your content, you guide your audience through your content because your content is consistent to the message. For example, at the end of the January and the end of the February or end of the March, you have a big sale coming up because it's seasonal. So it's the inconsistent and reactive content. It doesn't work very well. However, if you have a system in place, it's definitely going to help you. Post random content. This is what I've seen so often that um, business owners they just post random content, which just does not resonate with the with their business message, with the business itself, with the audience. So you got to remember this is a social platform, and because of this random thing, it confuses your audience. They have no idea what you do because they don't know. They can't relate because you don't know them. And you're just randomly creating content. It's so important when it comes to creating content. It's so important for you, for you and I to have a plan in place. So <clears throat> I know that it's been so overwhelming. It's just been one thing that it works for us and one thing that it works for my client. And I want you to know this thing. So. There is a better way. So if you have actually wondered how does that one person create original content week after week, either being podcasts, either being videos, being content, blog posts, you wonder how is that happening? There is an industry secret, my friend, that, um, that I want to share with you. And that industry secret is content batching. So what is content batching? <laughs> so Content batching is when you group, obviously back, batching been around for a long time, we just add a content to it. So when you group similar tasks, aka creating content together to work on the same, to work at the same time without interruption. So you might batch writing of your social media posts for a week 
um, for you might set aside Monday morning, three consecutive hours without interruption and focusing on creating social media posts for your account for a week on Monday for three hours. That's batching. You might decide to batch your, if you're doing podcasts, if you're doing videos, if you're doing blog posts, which is a longer, we're going to go through this step by step, which is a longer process. You can absolutely batch things. You can say one week, every three months, I'm going to sit down and do my long form. I'm going to do my podcast. I'm going to do my videos. I'm going to write it, record it, or I'm going to write it, um, review it, and get it ready to be published in the next three months, my blog. You sit down. So you sit down, you get those outline ready. Even when I'm going to do this training, you when I put this training together, I couldn't, there's no way I could go back and forward because I lose time. And to be honest, I might have, I, I'm not good with multitasking. I've decided I do not want to multitask because sometimes it takes away. So I get, I get stressed. So I don't produce a good material. And I learned that very early on. So I try to batch and I try to concentrate on one thing before I do anything else and I finish it. And um, it, it, I'm going to say that it comes down to your own, um, to your commitment to it. So, so batching can save you time, stress and effort. And as small business owners, we all know we have enough stress on our plate. It's not just because you've got to do everything. So you've got enough stress, let alone to have another stress of creating social content, which I, to be honest with you, doing this for a while, I've seen one of the most stressful for the um, small business owners is creating content, not don't know what to create, and it's just stressful, and we don't want that. So I really, really, really hope that you already see the benefits of batching. But let me tell you, top reason why batching saves you time. So there are benefits of batching. Number one, it increases your focus, meaning it decreases your decreases your distraction. So this is so important. Base because you focus your effort um, to one thing and you eliminate all the distraction around you and you commit to that, then you definitely increase your focus and increase your focus, create better results. And we all know that more focus equals better quality of work for sure. I know you might be saying, hang on, but what if I get distracted? What if this happens? What if that happens? This requires some willpower on our part, on your part. You've got to create a distraction-free zone and place boundaries around your batching time to protect your focus. At the end of the day, this is for your business benefit. This is for your benefit, for the why that you created this business. So next one is no task or context switching. So there should be no switching going on in your batching. So context switching is when you switch back and forth between tasks. For example, I want to write this social post. Now I'm going to, I've written the social post. Now I'm going to go to camera and create a graphic. Now I'm going to come back here and see what. So I wonder if I should do a video. We do not do that. Okay. We actually concentrate. We do not switch the context and we just concentrate on one task and one task alone for that period of time, which increases your productivity. Okay. So also when this happens, it will allow your mind to have a white space. I call it white space. I don't know if they call it something else. What I mean is it clears your mind to be more creative, to think about your business, to understand. And like this is just so much benefit. For me, it helps. When I don't have, I'm going to be honest, when I have back-to-back -back strategy sessions, back-to-back -back -back workshops, meeting a client, doing the sales, I learn that if I don't do it, then I don't give a service, especially when it comes to strategy sessions. I need to have a clear mind. I need to give white space to my mind to do whatever it does and do the crazy thing it does. I read a book, listen to the podcast, go for a walk, uh, drink a coffee. <laughs> so it's just this white space allows you to be more creative. You can create better content because this is definitely helps with the quality of the content as well. Trust me, I know. Okay, so so freedom and flexibility to focus on the things that will really move your business forward. Because bottom line, we are there to make sure that you are you're gonna make sure that you look after. Okay, so to batch or not to batch. 
it's not the question you should be asked. What I would like you to ask yourself is, where else can I batch in my business? Let's talk about the areas that you can do. Before we get to the seventh step, I want to share where else you can do this. Writing seems to be the biggest place that we struggle because it's the, the, it requires the longest time, longer time for us, um, longer time for us to actually concentrate on. It requires a lot of thinking, and it's one obviously one of the most important ones. So you can absolutely the area to batch is when you're writing a blog. If you're doing videos, you can write your video script. If you're doing podcasts or show notes, you can do them. For me, or even your email newsletters, your social media posts, writing the content for social media posts. So I'm going to give you a little secret. When my team create a social media post, I've got a team of people who create social media posts. Even they don't create graphics unless they write all the content. They do the hashtag. One, they, one does the hashtag. Then when we write all the content, after all of that, and we're comfortable with the content, then we go and create the graphic. We never, ever go backward, backward and forward because it gives you a focus. You read it, you sit in the graphic, and you do that. So it's so important. This is what it works for us. Next thing you can do is if you're doing recording, if you're doing video, you can absolutely do that. You can batch the videos to two or three days. You've already written your outline. You've already written everything that you need to record on your video um, or your podcast or even video training. Or even if you, have, <clears throat> if you do videos for your groups, you can absolutely batch those. Hopefully you do some live um, workshops, um, live Facebook, Facebook lives as well on your group. So this is very important. Just quickly, when it comes to videos, when I do my videos, I'm not really good with that line. I just write. So it's okay how you want to do it. It's okay how you want to do it. I write. My outlines usually it's the whole packet, um, whole long form. But that's who I am. That's how I do it. <clears throat> the next one you can do is not just your recording or writing. The daily emails you can give yourself five minutes in the morning, five minutes at lunchtime, or five minutes in the afternoon to go through your own daily. This is so important. You're batching it. It means you're not distracted with the notification with everything else. Social media is another one. We get so distracted with um, notification that we don't know. You can absolutely batch it. Customers do not expect you, um, and you shouldn't anyway, because your time should be spent on working on your business and um, growing your business. So you don't want to be sitting on social and just keep the notification pop up and you've got to do it. It's okay to do it maybe three times a, three times a day. Do it one in the morning, one at lunchtime, and one in the afternoon. Ten minutes. Ten minutes in the morning, so it's all together, what, I don't know, half an hour? Give it half an hour a day to do it and separate it so you're batching it. Bookkeeping is another one. This thing works really well for me. Your client meeting, if you've seen clients, you can actually batch those. Like for me, all of my online workshops, it's going to move to Thursday. It was all Monday. Everything I did was on Monday. Now we're moving everything to Thursday. So everything this year, everything from the morning to afternoon, I'm going to be online workshops. That's all I do. Workshops, recording, everything else is going to be on that day. I don't do it any other day. Even with meeting clients, even my network, Unless it's a really special place that I want to go or if I'm being asked as a speaker. But other than that, I only do my networking on the certain days. I only see people on Friday afternoon. I've got my uh, Friday morning. Friday afternoon is always booked to do my admin. So that's how it is. I don't know why I booked Friday afternoon with admin. But anyway, um, <laughs> so there's so much you can batch in your business. All right, so let's get to, so how many of you do you think you can, uh, let's go to the chat. How many of you do you think you can actually use batching in any other area? Anyone has any ideas? Or have you been using batching? Let's share in the comments. No? Creating content, yeah, that's definitely a big thing. But um, is there anywhere else that you can use? Do you think you can use con um, batching? Your task? All right. <laughs> it was cool. Um, okay, I continue. I won't ask questions until to the end. <laughs> when you have one idea, you can 
I change the right thing in the middle? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So let's go through the steps. This is the steps we do. You can always add or take away, but this is the step work with us. And that's what, how we do it. Step number one, um, content planning. This is so important. Step number two, we do the topic brainstorming and research. Then we do outline. Step three, delegation. Um, this is step four, delegation. Step five, content creation and repurposing. And then review and editing. Number seven, we schedule. All of these steps that I'm sharing with you, we don't do them at the same time. The content planning alone can be a batching on itself by itself. The content topic brainstorming and research can be um, by itself. That is a batching um, as well. Like even writing the outline, um, the delegation part, um, the content creation and repurposing, because obviously creation is different. And you can review it once a week. This is obviously it depends. Um, if you've got teams, but reviewing and editing, I always suggest to do it after when you create everything, then it gives yourself a space or even sleep on it, and then you can review and edit. All right, so let's go step by step. So content planning, this is very important. The key to your batching success, to creating original content week after week is planning. So when it comes to the planning, this is usually we suggest to spend two hours, and that's how much I spend in my business and how I suggest to spend with um, my clients do that as well so there's two hours of work and one thing i've learned is if you give yourself two hours you will finish the task in two hours if you give yourself a day to go through it it's going to happen in a day if you can do it this is a maximum time we'll give if we can do it in an hour the, the quicker you do it the better the more you do it the quicker you will get you have better system in place but two hours is maximum we do not want you to spend more than two hours on the um co uh, content planning part that is your batch, right? So number one, part of the planning will go, we've got to decide how many blogs, videos, or podcasts to batch. Okay, so another thing I was going to tell you, when we start, we start always, always, always start with a long form of content. It's either be blog posts, it's either be um, videos, if you're vlogging, <laughs> if you're doing videos, all of that is a long form. We always start with a long form, then we take the snippet out of it, which we're going to go through it. So the reason I say how many blog posts or how many how many blog posts you want to do, which you should be doing blogs um, for the SEO purposes, is let's say you want to create four or six blogs, meaning let's say you want to post one blog per week and or six for the next four weeks or for the next six weeks this is deciding on how many you want to create this is the time we decide how many blogs we want to create or how many videos we create if between four to six weeks is a best like a sweet number we got clients who do eight to ten weeks i don't but that's a very different thing they have team members who they do have a team who help um, but four to six weeks is a sweet number when you're starting and you can absolutely start with four so then we decide, okay, how many are we going to do? Let's say we're going to do four blocks for the next four weeks. So when we decided we're going to do four weeks, then we check our promotional calendar. Hopefully you do have a promotional calendar, meaning, for example, you go through your calendar for the whole year, we are in February, you sit and look at all the months up to December and say, okay, so every three months or every two months, I want to advertise or I want to bring people for this particular service because marketing and bringing people in it never stops. So let's say you go through it and you see, okay, in next two weeks or next four weeks, we've got Valentine's Day coming up and it might not have anything to do with your business. But if your business, what I'm trying to say, if the business has something to do with Valentine's Day, let's say your jewelry place, I don't know, beautiful. I don't know, beauticians, I don't know much about Valentine's, um, <laughs> but florist, florist. Um, so you plan it. You go, okay, so I'm going to do four weeks of half ten. And then in the next, I've got to go back to my promotional calendar and say, next four weeks, what happens? Next four weeks, I've got Valentine's Day coming up and nothing much. That's a big thing that we're going to concentrate on. This is obviously, I'm saying Valentine's Day, but you should have checked your promotional calendar for the January, February, back in December. However, this is just an example. So you check to see if there is any promotional coming up or if there is anything seasonal. So let's you, you write it down. Okay, we only have, for example, one that we only have Valentine's Day coming up for the next four weeks. So we have to write that down. Next one, is there any events coming up? Is there any events coming up? Let's say you're a florist. Is there any 
and you do wedding as well. And is there any events coming up? I know now we don't we don't have a lot of face to face events coming up, but is there any events relating to your business? If there is a wedding expo coming up, if there is um, any special day relate to your business, we we'll write them down and say what day. So, and then if there is any holidays you going to, when good times, we used to go on holidays. Um, if there is any, maybe in a state, if you're in WA, um, so, or any, I don't know what happens in everywhere else. I know they're probably thinking, I wish I could have gone to holiday. But so you write that down, am I going on holiday? Because are you talk? are you, um, are you are you taking your holiday and do you want to share that with your with your um, community so this is the planning stage we go through everything so we decided okay it's going to be february we're going to talk about valentine's day and then we have let's say for example it's a wedding expo coming up so we've written everything down and then we're going to two weeks before the valentine's day we're going to hit really hard advertising so we know exactly what we're going to do so then when we've done that we know what we're going to do we have to create, so now we're going to brainstorm for topic ideas. It's so a topic around all the plan we've done. Topic around, topic around the promotional calendar we have, topic around if we are going on a holiday or vacation and something that we can share with the community, topic around any events related to your business or audience coming up, for example, if there's a wedding expo comes up. So when that happens, we need to sit down and brainstorm topics. So you've got to set aside maximum two hours to come up with the content topics and flesh them out a bit. So you go through them and you go, okay, so we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about that. you got to review them. And if they align with your goals, then you're good to start the next batching step. So if the content that is going to, so the content that the, when we're going through the topics, the content, it's going to provide value to your audience. It's going to talk about what a great um, place, you, what a great, I don't know, floral arrangement you do for the Valentine's Day. I don't know if you do floral arrangement for Valentine's Day, but or for the weddings, anything um, around that area. I keep talking about florists. So, um, so you've got to make sure that you're providing value to your audience. So. One thing you might say, you must be thinking, hang on a second, how should I, how should I get my content, content topic ideas from? Let's say we sat down to do it, but I have, I have no content to go with. I don't know where to, where to start. So just a little secret. When I know I say content batching and spend time, when we sit down to create a content, I can guarantee you nothing will come up. No great ideas, no. <laughs> No content topic that we think, oh, I wanted to talk about this to the customers is none of them will come up. Do you know when it comes up? Like for me, it comes up when I'm in the shower in the morning, when I'm watching Netflix, they, they pop up in the most random way that I are, that's just weird. It doesn't come up when I sit down to do something. It doesn't come up. So what we have is we actually have a content. I've got a content depository. So what I've got, I've got it on my phone. I've got an Apple phone, so I've got a notes section. I've got a um, content idea dump. So whatever comes to mind, whenever I read a book, I see something and go, oh, wow, this is so good that to share. This is something to expand on. I take a picture of it. If it comes up, I'll write it down. So um, so you, it doesn't come up when you need it. So you have to make sure that you have a place that you can collate all of this information. Okay, so you're going to call a brain um, dump list. So you, I've got one for my LinkedIn and I've got another one that I just, I just put everything in there. Quote, I have another one for the quote as well. So if when I see a quote, then I love it. In the car when driving, I give a paper to write it down. That's perfect. Julia, you can actually ask Siri to do it. Did you know? I had no idea. You can actually double click on your phone and ask Siri to write a note. Um, I've got an accent and sometimes she comes up with stuff that didn't, doesn't work, but you can absolutely do that. You can, I to, yeah, I know it's weird. It's the most weirdest places it comes up. So, so definitely if you have success, success with that, definitely do it. But it's so important to have, um, yeah, it, it's so good. It's so good. If you, it, it makes a note and you can always go back into it, especially when you're driving. 
I've I've been caught up in the thing in the lie I tell myself sometimes. Oh, I remember it. I don't. When the time comes, I have no idea what I was meant to remember anyway. <laughs> Apparently it's got something to do with my age. But anyway, let's not go there. I'm 21 and I'm happy. <laughs> All right. So um this is so important. So brain dumping um some way it's so important. We also have okay, so actually we also have um, I've got a depository. So I've got all these dumps, like brain, brain dumps that I put on my phone because it was easier. I do have a spreadsheet that I go back in there, but that's me though. I love putting that in there because if like my team can have a look at it as well. So I've got a spreadsheet that I call a depository. So I go in and I type in the ones that I think, okay, does that make sense? Or was it just, I just got excited. So I do have a depository as well that we share with the team. You can absolutely do that. If you have someone who writes for you, a copywriter, you can have that depository, give access to them so they have an idea. They can see um, what what topics you want to talk about. If you have someone who writes it, someone doing your social media, these are the topics that we're going to talk about. These are the topics that I want to write about. So, so I'm going to share. So let's say you say, okay, I'm just starting and I have no idea where to start though. But I want to start doing some posts. I want to write a blog. So I want to share some um, some research me- method with you. So brain dump again. This is the best way to start your content brainstorming. So number one, and I do we do I do number thing number one that we always do is what I would suggest. If you don't have that um, list of stuff in your phone, if you don't have the depository, what you can do is give yourself ten minutes. And just sit down and write everything. You don't have to fix anything. You don't have to fix the grammar. There are so many things comes up. Ask yourself. This is a thing our brain is so fascinating. Ask your brain, what would the customer want to know? What is it about my business that I should talk about? What questions do you think the customers might have before they buy from you? So just, just do that brainstorm and just write it down. You don't have to fix anything. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just for you. All you're doing is dumping those ideas there. Don't, um, what is that word? Don't, um, I get to it. Anyway. Um, oh my God, God, no, I'm stuck with that. I'm looking for that. Don't judge or do, or do anything. Don't self, um, no anyway we'll get to it so that's the first method i would recommend for you starting out do a brain dump because i can guarantee you have so much experience or you're sitting here you're watching this you might say i don't know but you do you're here you have 10 years before you or um, there's so many whatever amount of year you have um, behind you to get where you are most of us start our business because of experience we have and sometimes we are our own first but a perfect ideal customer. So you know so much that you can just write it down. Let it flow in. Just free flow. Keep writing them down. So that's number one you can do. The next one, what you can do is, um, so yeah, so you're putting words down, maybe phrases, questions that your audience might have. Next thing, ask your audience. You can survey your audience. Obviously, this is if you have an audience. If you do have customers, ask them. Um, just, I think survey might be something that you can absolutely use. There's form, Google forms you can use, um, and send them three simple questions and ask them, please, if you don't mind, please answer those questions for me. It will definitely help. It helps, uh, my services. If you don't have the customers, not a problem. Go to, don't worry too much about it. Go around and see if there are, um, groups, like groups are good as well. You can absolutely do that. Um, what else I can say? You can ask people as to, um, like your friends and family. You can absolutely interview them. Um, sometimes you've got to be careful with friends and family though. They might say something that you might not be appropriate. <laughs> and they, um, burst your bubble. But, um, but definitely you can absolutely ask around and get some content ideas. For so the next one, content theming. So, this is important too. When we're talking about content theming, what we're talking about is setting the theme. Remember on that first um, planning section, we said, is there a promotion coming up? So you can theme the content around your promotion. 
for example, let's go back to um, to Valentine's Day. Let's say Valentine's Day, what questions people ask? Like you create content, what this, I don't know, make a list for the guy, list for the guys to do if they don't want to be stressed out on the last day. Um, so you create a theme around your product, your services, your niche. So when they're ready, they're going to say, oh my God, nether florist. I'm not good at flowers. flowers. Um, typical plant killer. So they might say nether floristry <laughs> had great content around this area. Um, guess what? If I'm ready, I might actually take them out to see what they have. So you theme it around what is happening, what special is coming up. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean advertising, but creating valuable content, original valuable content to show that you are authority in the field. You are the trusted advisor. Obviously, I'm not a good florist, so I cannot be a trusted advisor to do with flowers. So next one you can do um, your previous content. So set a time for probably 30 minutes and go back to your other blog posts. Go back to the um, um, social posts that you had a lot of interaction. I'm not saying we like redo them again, but see which content resonated really well with your audience. And you go, I can actually go deep. I can create different content around it. There's so much I can help people because they ask this question with regards to this content I created. That's another way that you can actually do, um, you can research topics. The next one, ask Google. Okay, Google is your best friend. I ask Google everything and anything. It's just, I just, there is so much available in Google that you can learn. Um, do you, does everyone know how we use Google? There's other platforms as well that you can do. Some of them are paid, some of them are not. But has in the comments, do you know how to search Google to get ideas? I can show you if you want to have a look. I can share that with you. Okay, we can do it at the end if you still want to. Not for the content. Okay. Okay, so what I do with Google, Google is so clever. You love Google? Oh my God, I am the same. I love Google. YouTube is another one too, because you, a lot of people search YouTube, YouTube to learn and you can get so much ideas around the keywords that you want to do. Right, let me stop this. I'm going to quickly go to Google and show you what, how we can use Google. Okay. So let's say I actually started, I want to learn how to play golf, right? Let's do golf. Pinterest is good too. Yes, Pinterest is very visual. It's um, absolutely, Tamara, Pinterest is really good, but Pinterest is very visual. When we go to Google, for example, I want to uh, learn how to play golf. Oh. oh, let me do chess. I want to do chess. Let's do chess. I want to must be searching chess. Okay. So when you are in Google and you, let's say you are, you teach people how to play chess, that's your expertise. Um, I love Queen Gambit. Anyway, distraction. <laughs> this is where the rabbit hole comes in. So when you click here, learn how to play background chess for free for beginners online, for beginners PDF, apps for kids well, and all of that. So I always leave it, learn how to play chess. And then obviously the first thought sometimes they're advertising. I always come down here and see people also ask. So then you can go, how can I teach myself playing golf, um, playing chess? So this is the questions that people must have asked. Other things people also ask. So it's exactly the same way you are. And you, can, if you are playing, if you are teaching people how to play chess, you can you can write something. You can write the content. How can I teach myself to play chess? And you are an expert in that field. You can absolutely get, um, write about it or do a video, whichever you're comfortable. And then you come down. So you go all the way down. See the feedback part. How to play um, chess for beginners, how to learn how to play chess app, if there is any apps, if there are apps and you're playing, teaching people how to play chess, and there are some good apps there, this is how you create value. You write about those apps and tell people, trust me, they will come to you because it's not easy. I've tried, you can't, I don't, I'm not good at it. So. <laughs> so then what you do is when you click on either of these, then it gives you another lot of um, um, questions and ideas. 
How can I be original? You give yourself. So you write about it. We never, what, what we created, we never original, uh, original creator of chess or playing chess. But your experience is very different from my experience and how I teach is very different from another marketer. I'm a marketer and there's plenty of marketers out, out there, plenty of social media marketers out there, plenty of people who talk about Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising or creating content. But I am an in, expert in my industry and I have I've been, no one has the same experience that I have. No one has, um, so it's, it's, no one is me. No one is you, Julia. So when you're talking about your craft, how you teach people, how you think they should go about it, that's your own original content. We're not copying and pasting. So that's how I mean. It is an original content because honestly, I didn't came up with Facebook. I didn't come up with Facebook advertising. Plenty of people out there who can help people with Facebook advertising. My expertise is, my experience has always been helping service-based businesses. I've got my opinion how people should do it. And it's okay. I can still, the stuff I talk about, it could be similar to someone else. But my experience is very different. There is no other Julia. Do you mean? There is no other Julia who can actually talk about how to play chess. <laughs> so this is definitely, these are topic ideas. It's not copying and pasting. It's a topic ideas that you take inspiration from to write your own piece. ideas yeah yes absolutely and you will know it's like let's say in here when i talk about so small business owners when i do facebook advertising there's so many ideas out there there are people who hate boosting there are people who actually attacked me marketers attack me for telling people it's okay to boost but they have no idea i've experienced it i've done it with my client been doing that for so long and spent probably in the boosting alone about four hundred thousand six two thousand and eighteen not my money there's plenty of customers. When they attack me and say, I have no idea, I don't know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing, but it's okay. It's absolutely okay. I still like that you've got my opinion about those things. It's not going to change anything. Um, hopefully it makes sense. Yes, people ask for more. It's so good. It just gives you so much information. Um, all right. We're good? Are we good? We're all right with the, you can use um, YouTube exactly the same. Absolutely, you can use YouTube exactly the same. Okay, let's continue. Where were we? All right. So we asked Google, let's go and share my screen. Okay, so we asked Google. All right, so now we've done the content topic and we've done, we've got our ideas all written down. We've done all of our research. Now it's time to do an outline. So what I mean by outline is after you decide on your final topic uh, and you're happy with it, time to put together an outline before you start the process of creating the long form of content. So that's exactly what I do. Um, so I create the outline and I create a different, um, it's exactly like when you're creating any essay that you used to write. I was so bad at it. <laughs> so um, I'm not good with writing. I love talking and I can do an outline. But as soon as I, I do outline and I'm very comfortable with the outline, but if I have to do a long form, that's not for me. That's why I've got someone who helps me out to write those out. But when you've got your content topic ready, it's the batching time and the batching time is content. Um, so you've got the outlines. So now we're ready to write. So before this, this is obviously, um, so you've done the outline. It, the next step, which is step four, is the content delegation. Okay, so that outline when you create, um, for example, in here, my outline was content delegation. So the seven steps um for content batching and then i've got content delegation so the part of content dele delegation so the so then we write now that you have outline outline time to um now you've got your outlines it's time to delegate this obviously applies if you have team of people who write for you if you have a copywriter who write long form for you um this is the time that people actually can create posts for you and everything else. This is the time to start writing. If you have people who do it, then the delegation comes in. 
if you don't and you do everything yourself, um, trust me when I tell you, you're so lucky if you can write long form. Um, if you don't have a team and you've got to do it yourself, then you just have to skip that. Can be done on freelance. Yes, absolutely. Because the the guideline, the outline and everything will teach them what you want. It's a good start for them to do it. Um, hopefully the freelancer has been working with you because if you're just starting out, I wouldn't. Um, no, it's absolutely not expensive. You, if you find a good one, absolutely not expensive. And it's good too. It gives you free time to think and concentrate on your customers and your business. So, if you do have someone, you can absolutely delegate. Like Julia said, you can give it to the freelancer for the graphics and everything else. Um, but if you don't you do everything yourself, you just skip this. So the next step, time to create. So you record, you write, everything. So it could be you're doing an outline, then you're recording your videos. That's what I do. I don't write a long form of video. Then what I do is we'll get a transcript of my video and we repurpose it. But if you are writing, then now it's a time to sit down. Usually I tell people you've got to put aside two days to create four to six long form content. If you're doing video and you're comfortable and you're like me, you look at something and start talking, that's totally fine too. But writing two days, you need to give yourself to just sit down and write and write and write and write. So then we repurpose to it at the same time we, we repurpose. So I've combined these two together, the repurposing and writing the content. So what do you, what do I mean by repurposing? Is repurposing content, obviously knows, also known as recycling, is the practice of reusing all of the element of existing content in order to expand content's reach. So you pull out quotes from your long form. Your social media post comes from your long form. Your short videos come from your long form. Your interesting fact, statistics, step by step. Your email newsletters. So if you're thinking, oh my God, now I've written a blog, now I have to go and write an email. You don't need to. That long form blog that you sat down for two days, you spend two hours to get the planning ready. You spend two hours to put the topic together. You spend... Um, I don't know, another four hours to put the outline for all of them together. Another two days you sat down and you wrote this beautiful blog or um, show notes for your podcast or whatever you did. Now it's time to repurpose it. Now it's time to grab content from that long blog and create social posts for yourself. Now it's time to use the same blog that you've written and make it into the email. Use the snippet of it, make it into the email. There's your email newsletters. That's where the repurposing comes in. This is where the magic happens that you have all the content. You don't have to keep creating posts. You don't have to keep creating emails for your list. So you excuse me. I hope I didn't. I tried to turn it off as soon as I could. So this is where we repurpose. Thanks, Erica. I hope I really didn't. I tried to turn, um, mute myself as soon as I, I can. I'm sorry. Sorry for sneezing to the microphone. Um, <laughs> so this is what you can absolutely do coming with purchasing the long form of your content. We've done that. This is a review and editing time. I always say when you write a long form, even if it's yourself who writes it, um, or even someone else writes that for you, you always have to give it time to review it. Sleep on it a day later, put time aside to review it. The thing that I have to tell you, this is so, so important, even if you're giving someone else to do stuff for you, to do your social media, to do your blogging, you must review it. This is yours. It has to represent your business. When we're starting out a new client, it takes a while for us to get understand the client, create the right content. But we always check to make sure that this represents their business before we go ahead and do anything. And from a business owner to the business owner, like for me, it's my business. So no one knows your business as well as you do. No one knows my business as well as I do. If you're doing it yourself, that's fine. You still have to give yourself time to review your content, your blog posts and your newsletters and everything else, but especially when someone else is doing it. Take time to go through it. Take time to be direct. Take time to get back to them. 
it's okay. The more they hear from you, the better it is for them. Your content will get better. So do not forget reviewing and editing. This is so important. So we've done that. We've created everything. We've reviewed. We already come to schedule. So all of the blog content, um, you can schedule your social posts for another four to six weeks. You can do, you can do emails to the subscribers. You can schedule it for the four to six weeks. Your video podcast, if you've got a membership group, you can absolutely get them ready and schedule. And all you have to do is for the next four to six weeks, and trust me, it comes around really quick. For the next four to six weeks, you can just work on your business, spend time with your customers, means you have, you're refreshed, you know everything is happening in the background, you have more control. And at the and like I said, you can spend time with your customers, with your prospect, go networking, see the family. Because sometimes it's so hard. <laughs> All right, here you go, everybody. These are the seven steps that we do, seven steps that I recommend to my clients. And you can absolutely use that. You can add to it. You can take away from it. This works really well for us. And hopefully it is helpful for you as well. So let's get to the question and see if we have any questions. Actually, I am going to send you this as well. So I know that we talked about, I'm going to share this with you in a second. Where are you? I'm going to share this with you as well. Do you get an email from Zoe that this list will get sent out to you? So I know that I talk about the content ideas and everything else. One thing I have to say is I've got this hundred um, um, social media post idea cheat sheet that I sent that our creator and business station is using it as well, which is, which is absolutely fine. This is just for you, for the small businesses to use. So you can go through these. They're just, they're supposed to trigger and give you ideas what you can post, what you can write about. If you can, trust me when I tell you, you can write about stuff. So, um, for example, I had, um, I had a review, which was a bit un, I thought it was unfair because it was attacked by, it was attacked personally. I don't, I've always learned good or bad opinion of others. It's got nothing to do with me as long as I'm not rude and disrespectful. But one thing I learned is it all depends if I was helpful in that moment. But this particular review was really attackful. It was attacking me as a person. And I don't get upset. Maybe I had my period. <laughs> it actually affected me so bad. And I had to go meditate, I had to write about it, I couldn't understand, and I hate to be rude to anyone. I, even in my mind, I was thinking, oh my God, why am I thinking about this? And one thing that made me think is, I want to write about it. I want to write about how it affects you, and it's okay, but you, I, should, I needed to control to be aware that I shouldn't react and I shouldn't reply rudely. It's got nothing to do with me. It was, um, it was very personal. So... But you can absolutely use that. It's a great little, um, it gives you a little spark as to, oh, I can talk about this. I can talk about that. Some of the stuff might not apply to you, um, but some of the stuff definitely applies to you. I've got here, promote yourself 15 to 25% of the post. Um, this is, I've always left it to the last because we it's a social selling and we want to use that to create content that is valuable for our audiences. You can 15 to 25% of the time you can talk about yourself how great your services are most of the time it's just an interaction because it's a social platform anyway so you will get that from zoe zoe will send that to you to everyone who um registered for this okay so let's go i'm going to stop the sharing i'm going to get back here so any questions you're welcome erica i'm glad it, it is helpful We're actually very good um it just gives you ideas what to talk about and what to post. It's a good little um, the spark, whatever that is. <laughs> Tool for scheduling, not Outlook or spreadsheet. Is there anything else? Um, scheduling your post? Yeah, okay. So with your um, blog post, you obviously, WordPress has its own thing. Um, I use my... Um, my website is Squarespace, so you can actually copy and paste. My team does that copy and paste and schedule it there. With your social platform, with your social post, Facebook and Instagram has an automation software called uh, Facebook Creator Studio. It's free. It's great. It's fantastic. You can use it, and it's free. You don't have to pay. All, everything is there. 
Yes. <coughs> it's so good. It's I actually think for small business, you don't have to pay. If you're using Facebook and Instagram, you absolutely should not pay um, for um, for the automation software, um, scheduling software. Hang on, I'm going to give you the Creative Studio. I'm going to give you a link so you can set yourself up. <coughs> Copy. All right, don't know who's, who else is using it, but this is the link. Um, just open it up and it comes up in your browser. So it's called um, Create a Studio for Facebook, and you can post it on Facebook and Instagram. I know Business Suite does that, so cre they've created, they've added the function for the Business Suite so you can post on your Instagram and your Facebook as well. But I like Create a Studio because it's separate. I can, I can see it better. You can use both. But if you're looking for something, definitely that. There are other ones like Buffer. Um, Buffer been around for a while. They've got Food Suite. Um, there are so many other ones that you can absolutely use. Let's do that actually. Is that Google? It's that um, neither of this I know anyway. But so best um, scheduling scheduling software for small business. Let's share the screen. Let's see what comes up. Okay, so let's come down here. Okay, so let me go small business 2022. Oh, there's nothing comes up. So 21. All right, come down here. Tools.com. Number scheduling software. It's HR. Sometimes I go. Zapier is actually Zapier is good. I use Zapier. Zapier needs um, they're very independent and they need to be biased, which is really good. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. No, no, I'm not scheduling. I think it's scheduling software for that. This is a scheduling software if you want people to book you in. Do you know scheduling? Best social media. Scheduling software. Let's see if it works. All right. Yes. Social media management software 22. Let's see what this guy is coming up with. Okay. Scratch. Social, Hootsuite, Zoho, Meet Edgar. Meet Edgar is good as well because you can actually post in uh, most of them now. You can do it. Um, Lumi is sendable. This is something that I use for my business, but I use it to post in clients' um, platforms and myself as well. Because it's really good for the agency to it's safer as well. No worries, Teresa. So the next one is buffer, social pot. Um, there's plenty out there you can use. And to be honest, you just use what works for you. And as I said, social uh, Facebook and Instagram, just use um create a studio. It's free. Planning is good for Instagram as well. Yes, absolutely. Amy. I've used that for a little bit, but then when um I was using Buffer before that, but for me, it's a bit different. But um, yeah, Planoly is good. Some of them have great ideas. Like they do give you some um, templates and that's really good. Do what works for you, whatever works for you best. And it's in your budget and that's what it needs to be doing. And then go for it. All right, everyone. Eric and Tamara, you're the only ones. <laughs> Thanks for your time. You guys have a great day. If you don't have any questions, we just say goodbye. No worries, Erica. No worries, Julia. Oh, how come I don't see you? I only see Tamara and Erica. I can't see you, Julia. Oh, it's Tamara, Julia. <laughs> no camera. Okay. But it's, some of these things are coming up. I can only see Erica and I can see Tamara, but I don't see you again. No worries. Thanks, Tamara. Bye, everybody. Have a great afternoon.